earlier this month, Africa marked a decade since the first ever FIFA World Cup final was played on its soil as Spain edged the Netherlands 1-0 to lift the coveted trophy in Johannesburg. CGTN CS Duplessis was among the battery of international journalists who covered the historic tournament and now shares his memories of working as a reporter at that World Cup. I still can't believe that 10 years have gone by since that amazing time in South Africa. Many people who I speak to about that special event wish that that feeling could be bottled and then released into the air whenever the Rainbow Nation is going through a tough time. I'll do my best to explain how incredible it was to be a part of and what it meant for South Africa then and now. The 2010 FIFA World Cup. After the host bid announcement in 2004, the build-up to the tournament was rife with speculation and doubt about South Africa's ability to host the World Cup and that it should be moved to another country. But as the tournament neared, five new stadiums were built and others refurbished, international airports upgraded and the country's infrastructure given a much-needed boost. Reporting on the readiness of stadiums, squad announcements, team arrivals, covering training session and the matches was all a blur as the cold weather gripped the country, but it certainly did not dampen the spirits of everyone involved. Kickoff on June 11th saw 90,000 packed into the FNB Stadium. There wasn't a free seat. Simpiwe Chabalala's goal sent the Rainbow Nation into celebration and those who could not be a part of the opener watched on from fan parks all over the country while the rest of the world were glued to their television screens. Hundreds of broadcasters representing 70 countries broadcast the event to a cumulative audience of over 25 billion, an average of 400 million per game. All eyes were on South Africa, including the doubters and skeptics, who soon realized they were wrong all along. As the tournament progressed, the unrelenting cold weather continued, but the feeling of togetherness and celebration continued. Even after the hosts were knocked out, fans from all over the globe came in their droves to support their teams. The great Diego Maradona and his star-studded Argentina had thousands turn up to training sessions. Ronaldo and Portugal had mass followings, while the Dutch and Spain flew under the radar off the field. Thousands of journalists covered the event and, uh, and packed yeah, the press conference venues pre- and post-games. The clash between Germany and Uruguay and Port Elizabeth. But Work continued, whether in studio at the Supersport HQ in Johannesburg or at the venues as the tournament reached its business end. There was heartache for Ghana as they crashed out, leaving Africa's hopes of a first-ever winner in tatters as drama swirled around the Black Star's controversial exit. The fans continued to pour into the stadiums and show their support for the beautiful game until the final. In the end, the curtain came down on a stunning, seamless and near-perfect event under the stars on yet another freezing winter night. The late great Nelson Mandela in his final public appearance waved to the capacity crowd in a standout moment of nation building. Africa had been done proud. It may not have been the conclusion that Africa would have wanted, as Spain were deservedly crowned champions here at Soccer City on the night of July 11th. But it is an event fondly remembered for an unforgettable experience that has changed lives, lifted a nation and set the tone for the rest of the world to follow. Therefore, I am proud to say I was there for Africa's first ever World Cup. CS2 plus C, CGTN, Johannesburg, South Africa.